I think it's time that we do a check-in on all the arcs that I have currently read because there have been some amazing books that I think you guys will want to read. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through some of the arcs that I have recently read that I think you will want to pick up for one reason or another. But before I get into it, please always make sure that you like and subscribe. Check my description box below for all of my links, including my Patreon, Hango Books account, my socials, so many more things. So definitely check that description box and let's just get into the arcs that I've read. The first book that I want to talk about is Bleeding Rose by by Kyla Schinder. I always mess up that name. This book has already been released. It released at the beginning of September. It is a fantasy romance with like a bully aspect where it is enemies to lovers. It is really enemies and the bullying is like crazy. I did not expect that this book would be that extreme. And what I mean by that is you have our girl who is a human. She decided to go for a job interview to be a guidance counselor at a school and she thought that it was going to be in like I think New York or upstate New York. However, she ends up signing a contract for like a one-year deal. Then ends up going to a different plane of existence that she didn't even know was there and she is a guidance counselor at a school for primordials which are dragon shifters, wolf shifters. You have beings that can read your mind. You have beings that have like strength. I mean, just all of these different things. And she is thrusted into this world. Nobody wants her there. They all hate humans. So this girl goes through so many things. Definitely check trigger warnings before you go into this book because she gets some broken bones. She almost nearly gets killed. I mean, there are a lot of things that happen to our girl, but she keeps persevering. She wants to help these children, even though she's not wanted by anybody. Enter our male main character. He is the teacher that's over the Varmin, I think, department, which is like the shifters, like dragon shifters and stuff. He is a dragon shifter. He really doesn't want her there, but at the faculty lodging, they have their apartments, I guess, right across the hall from each other. So they're always like bumping into each other, running into each other, different things like that. I'm going to tell you right now, this book was so good on so many different levels. It had a unique world, a unique storyline. I mean, of course, enemies to lovers, the bully theme, fantasy romance. I mean, all of those have been done, but the way that this story was done, how it is done on a whole different plane of existence, the banter between our female and male main character, how it is an extremely slow burn, and I mean extremely, and the way that there are plot twists, the twists and turns that happen. Our girl, she is strong for a human. Like, I don't know if I could physically do what she did. I don't know if I'd want to stay, but she just keeps trying and that just shows the character for her. But the character growth that really got me was our male main character. He went from being this horrible person, this teacher that was really out to get her, nearly tried to kill her, things like that. And then by the end of the book, he's an entirely different person because his eyes are opened up. He starts realizing the wrongs that he's done, but it comes because she starts counseling his younger brother and sister who are twins, and they really need help. There is a lot of trigger warnings in here, especially for um, kids in bad situations, how they were taken away from their mother. I, I highly suggest going to that, but if you want a very unique storyline and you want a extremely slow burn romance, but one that has so much character character growth and development and this world just expands the more that you read it. I highly suggest trying it out. It is extremely good. I honestly can't wait for the second book to come out. I gave this book four stars only because the first 20% I would say it was hard for me to get into it because you are thrusted so quickly into this world with no really background or anything. But once you start getting into it and you start learning the characters and really diving into the 
the world and the history of it, you just start flying through it. You don't want to put the book down. Four stars. I highly suggest picking this up if you are a romanticy lover with the enemy to lovers trope as one of your favorites. The next book that I had read is Oath of Betrayal by Olena Nikitin. I'm just butchering all of these names. I know it. Now, hear me out. I ended up giving this book two stars, but that does not mean that it will not be a hit for you or for a lot of readers out there. This book was not a hit for me only because I went from Bleeding Rose to Oath of Betrayal, which is not the author's fault at all. But I went to that and it was like a different change of pace and I just couldn't get into the story. I was not understanding why certain things were happening, but I really think this is going to hit a lot of people where they love it. Now, it is a fantasy romance. It has polyamorous relationships. Make sure that that is a, a trope that you like. And you start out with like a prologue where you are in a female main character's head. She has two guys with her, which are like her guardian type things. And they help, I guess, like be a conduit of her power, I guess. Like she grounds them and like they can use her power kind of thing. Or if she didn't have them, her, her magic would be wild is what it would be. So whenever they wake up, they're out on like a scouting mission, I think. They emerge from their tent and there is this wild beast, I guess, that they didn't expect to be there. It's like a big tumbleweed, shall we say. Um, and I guess it it's made of all these bones and it can like just basically grind a person up pretty quickly, I guess. And things happen, right? Things don't work out for the two characters, two male main characters. Our female main character is able to get away, but not before a dragon comes to help take care of this wild thing that should not be there, that crossed over, I guess, a barrier, I shall say. Our girl ends up kind of just running away, hiding. She doesn't want to be found because if she was found, she would be taken back to where she was from and then forced to have new conduits, I guess, guardians. And she doesn't want that because she really loved her guardians. She doesn't want to do that. So 10 years go by. We're in the head of another male main character and he is like the captain, you know, of this regime. They are trying to keep the border safe because across the border is where all of these beasts and these wild things are. They're trying to keep everybody safe, but it's coming up on a year time frame. Like, I don't know if it's every year or every couple years. They have what's called Maiden Day, I think is what it's called. And basically men can go into the village that are soldiers and they can pick single women and take them back to their castle, wherever they're at, do basically whatever they want with the women. The women have absolutely no say. And then they get released after a year. This is where the book kind of lost me because our female main character is found in the village. She doesn't want to be found and she ends up being pursued by our male main character. And he's basically like, well, you can't tell me no. You're a single maiden. You're going to go back with me. You don't have a choice. So she ends up going back, ends up talking to another guy there. She ends up in this like thruple, shall we say. And the story goes from there. Where it lost me was the first four to five chapters were super slow and they were written in a way that like I could not grasp what they were talking about. I couldn't grasp the world, the magic system, why we are supposed to even care about this. I mean, it just, it didn't grip me. I can tell you that right now. If it wasn't for me trying to get through the arc, I probably wouldn't have continued. However, by the time we get to chapter five, six, seven, things really start taking off. You start understanding why she was hiding, why she needs multiple male love interests, why this is an okay thing. You start understanding what is happening beyond the wars and why there are monsters coming after these people. You start learning so much about the history and the lore and the mythology in this world. I got to a point where it did not hit for me only because I was like, I feel like we started off so slow and then boom, we like took off at zero to a hundred in a chapter. So I think this will hit for a lot of people that really like their romance to be very profound in their books. I also think that this would work for a lot of people who like the polyamorous trope, like the some
somewhat enemies to lovers like the mystery on why are these monsters coming to attack us and why is people's magic wild if they don't have conduits and stuff I think there are going to be a lot of people that love this book it didn't hit for me but I think that if any of that sounds intriguing to you definitely try it out right like definitely get through the first four chapters and then dive into the story I think that you possibly will end up liking it it just wasn't a hit for me for a lot of reasons and some of those reasons are not the fault of the author it's the fault of me coming off the high from bleeding rose that that's on me that's my fault so then I ended up picking up the white wolf's wrath by Shay Holsey I think is how you pronounce it this is actually kind of a quick read I want to say it was like 250 pages it wasn't a very long book but it is the first book in the start of a series this is dealing with the fae and mythology Celtic mythology to be specific our female main character is basically grown up in a life of privilege her father is like some big lord who takes care of the land around all of these people and she is betrothed to a guy who I guess you could think he was a prince in this area but he's not a prince and they grew up together so she's okay with this she's okay with this arranged marriage of course it's not a fiery passion type of you know love that she has for this guy it's more of like a friendship a loyalty shall we say but their village is attacked all of a sudden she goes out to try to help the soldiers keep the people that are attacking at bay she ends up getting hit over the head and knocked out whenever she wakes up she's kind of confused not understanding what's going on her family is all killed most of the villagers are killed and now there are people living in the village that she knows doesn't know who they are she just knows that the white wolf and his army is in her village and she has always heard horror stories growing up about who the white wolf is and why you should avoid him at all costs but he's living in her family house so she decides to be kind of a decoy she wants to cut her hair dye her hair she acts like she's a servant the person that used to cook for her family is still alive and so she clings to them and they keep her protected so she acts like a servant for several weeks all of a sudden things happen she gets found out who she is you find out more about this world which at first I was like okay you know this is just like an army this is kind of like a medieval setting you know blah blah, blah. but then the fae come in you have vampires that come in you have wolf shifters that come in I mean just all of a sudden like everything exploded and I was like okay I am here for this there are dragons there are mysteries there's magic I mean the Celtic lore is so heavy in this book I loved it I ate it up I ended up giving this book four stars okay I highly suggest if you love Celtic mythology if you love kind of like a girl who used to be privileged and is now you know being undercover as a servant trying to keep alive and there's mystery and there is so many things that this girl doesn't know about the world that shifts her view and shifts like her thought process I have thoughts okay about where I think this book is going in the romance department shall we say because I think this is going to end up being a why choose relationship I really think it is because the way that the author set up her feelings with a couple guys that are planted throughout the book really makes me feel like it is going to be a why choose or at least a polyamorous relationship with her and two others at least so I'm excited <laughs> to get to book two which I don't think is coming for a while unfortunately but if you guys like like I said Celtic mythology with all of these types of creatures and a mystery the White Wolf's Wrath will not let you down I then ended up reading Seasons of Flesh and Flame by A.G. Howard which is book two in this duology so it wraps up the story I read the first book a year or two ago I absolutely loved it this is gothic this is Halloween this is spooky season this is everything okay it wrapped up the story so well you are following our girl who has family that dies every year on Halloween one person does so she's trying to stop that from happening and she ends up in this other world with the Goblin King and a mystery there's a subtle romance but not prevalent it's like not the focal point if you want spooky vibes if you want everything to give you that 
ambiance for Halloween, pick this book up, especially the first book. Read the first book first, which is Shades of Rust and Ruin. That gives you the backstory and kind of why her family is dying and what happened and now why we are here, why we are still in the Goblin King courts, what is happening with the romance, what is happening with a lot of things. It will just put you in the mood. And I ended up giving this book three stars only because I wanted more. It was too short for me. I wanted more. I wanted to stay in this world. But if you want that perfect gothic Halloween vibe ambiance, pick up the duology. I then ended up picking up Wished by Sarah Reddy. This book is, I guess, in a series of interconnected standalones. I'm going to tell you right now, this book was so good. It is about a girl who is a housekeeper for this rich guy. He's like the most eligible bachelor in this area and he's not like with anybody but she's been cleaning his house for three years and she want she really is like in love with him but he doesn't even know who she is and she ends up finding like a necklace on kind of his jewelry area and it says for her to make a wish so she wishes that she was married to this guy they wake up the next morning and all of a sudden they're married they've been married for seven years both of them remember their old lives and so they're like how did we get here? The banter is good. The comedic relief is so good. The romance is wholesome. I loved so much about this. It was a great palette cleanser. If you like your rom-coms and you like those quick fun reads, this one is definitely one of the best and I ended up giving it four stars. Loved it so so much and this cover, this cover is stunning. The last arc that I have read recently is The House on Watch Hill by Karen Marie Monning. This book, perfect perfect for this time of year. It's coming out October 1st. I highly suggest picking it up. I loved everything about this book. It is spooky. It is witchy in a way. It has kind of those gothic vibes. This house is alive in a way. She ends up, she starts out poor taking care of her mother who is unfortunately dying of cancer and whenever her mother passes she ends up getting this note that she needs to go to Louisiana because she has just basically gone an inheritance from a long lost relative she's never known about. She ends up in Divinity, Louisiana and all of a sudden she has this massive like 500 plus acre estate that she's like what is happening? She's gonna be like a wealthy millionaire at the end of her years if she ends up staying. She ends up going into this house and things are not as they see. She's having weird visions, weird things are happening, people are being weird around her, the whole town is against her. Karen Marie Monning, you brought it, you are amazing. This book, five stars. I cannot recommend this enough, especially for spooky season. This is going to set the vibe for so many people. So if you like Karen Marie Monning's writing from her previous series, definitely go pick up The House on Watch Hill. And I apologize, that was not the last one. The other book that I did finish up is Rebel Witch by Kristen Cicerelli, which is book two in the duology, which is Heartless Hunter or Crimson Moth if you are in the UK. I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about this book because I need to keep it under wraps until February when the second book comes out. Just know five stars all around. Kristen Cicerelli did an amazing job on wrapping up this story with Gideon and Rune and the whole continent that is against, against witches. It had me flipping the pages as quick as possible. My heart wanted to burst out of its chest so many times. I was gasping. I was crying. I was giggling. This book is so good. I gave the first book I think four or five stars. This book was a five star a solid one. Like there was no questioning it. So if you really like the first book in this duology, run to go get Rebel Witch whenever it comes out in February. I'm telling you right now, I could not stop reading this book. I devoured it. I loved it so much. I love Gideon. I love Rune. I love everybody in this book. I wish there were more. I hope she comes up with spinoffs because I want to be back in this world already. I do plan to reread this closer to the time of it coming out because I just, I need to be back in this world. I may reread the whole duology. I'm just in love with them that much. All right, everybody, those are all the books that I have recently read that I think that you would enjoy, but I'm getting caught up on my arcs, some great ones at that. If you made it this far in the video, please make sure that you leave me a thumbs up emoji and leave me comments down below. Are any of these on your radar? Are you gonna be pre-ordering them or picking them up that they've already released? I am happy with how many books I have read that have been outstanding. So hopefully we can keep that theme going, but until
until next time everyone, I'll see you later. Bye!